today we have a highly respected, a very distinguished politician and administrator of our country who has set a highly commendable and impressive record, unparalleled by being the Chief Minister of Delhi consecutively for three terms. A great achievement by an Indian lady. And Srimadi Sheila Dishi has turned Delhi from the rather negative image of a cynical city to a city of dreams. A wonderful record of achievements and playing the chief hostess to Indian democracy at the capital. And we have a very fortunate evening right now here at the residence of Shilaji to know the inner person and uh, hear about her yet to be achieved glorious dreams for this great nation's historic capital city. Thank you very much, Shilaji. As we have mentioned to the audience, how you have achieved this magnificent record, turning Delhi from a cynical city to the city of hope. Please tell us, madam. Well, I'll tell you, uh, it's difficult for, for me to say it in a sentence or two sentences, uh, but I have been brought up and bred and educated here. So I have a, a very natural affinity to the city per se. Mm -hmm. You know, people who belong to states belong to a particular uh, district or a particular village or something. I belong to Delhi. And um, uh, my love for Delhi and my uh, opportunity to do something to the city which gave me so much uh, has been a godsend. And uh, I do it with passion and with absolute sincerity. I suppose that's the only thing I can say about myself. Uh, for the rest, the people judge and uh, uh, either reject you or elect you. <laughs> I mean, uh, the traffic congestion of this capital city mm -hmm. has been so rather infamous, so yes. to speak, across the globe because all the heads of state, diplomats coming to the city and uh, within the last uh, one decade, uh, madam, you have transformed it. it is a very very convenient traffic uh, of uh, among the world cities mm -hmm. and uh, how you have decided that okay let me try this is the most important thing uh, so would you please tell us the strategy you see when i came uh, became the chief minister of the state uh, i decided uh, i put myself in the in the place of a common citizen what is the common citizen looking for He's looking for good transport. He's looking for a clean Delhi. He's looking for a, a Delhi which is not polluted. He's looking for uh, good education. He's looking for good health. And above all, uh, the whole country believes Delhi or knows that Delhi is the mm. capital. So ca uh, Delhi is the window of India to the world. into the world or out of, to the world. So, uh, we have a very cosmopolitan uh, population from diplomats uh, of ambassadors and all that, corporate houses to people who migrate to looking for a job here from all parts of the country. Uh, incidentally, for your viewers, uh, I must tell you that uh, people from Kerala have been the backbone of Delhi for a very decades now, you know, our health services and our bureaucratic uh, services, services, particularly the central government, have been uh, resting on the shoulders and moving on the shoulders of people who come from Kerala. And uh, there are lots of areas where you find temples of the people of Kerala, the Guruvayur 
replica is here and so on. Uh, traditions are here, food is here, mm -hmm. Kerala food is very much loved. So Kerala has played a very integral part, a very important part in the growth of Delhi as a cosmopolitan city. Then of course we have people from UP, Bihar, Haryana, everywhere. So it's a cosmopolitan mm -hmm. city just like India is a cosmopolitan yes, yes. Con subcontinent. So, and we as a government, local government, uh, because the federal government is here, we do not have the kind of powers that say Kerala has mm -hmm. or any other state has. So we have a whole multiplicity of authorities, land does not belong to us, police does not belong to us. And yet, we are seen as the face of Delhi because we are the elected bodies. The Delhi Development Authority, which looks at land or holds the land, is not an elected body. The police is not an elected body. So they don't report to us, they go to the Home Minister. Of course, we have a say and there's a lot of harmony. Mm -hmm. Doesn't, that does, uh, does not deter us. But we are not responsible for it. Yet people think that if there's a law and order situation or there's a murder, the it elected guy, the not sure. Yes, the no, common person doesn't know. So we are working under circumstances which are also very congenial for us in the sense we, since the federal government is here, the diplomats are here, and so many high level, all the highest politicians of the country are here. Uh, it's a great advantage, you know. But at times, madam, mm -hmm. I remember uh, Honorable Chief Minister, uh, yourself has uh, just pointed out the archaic type of uh, administrative, however unique it may be, uh, system, maybe uh, a hurdle, I mean, at times. No, yes, uh, it To is. whatever uh, dynamic plans which you are going to. I entirely agree. Yes. It's more a hurdle than it is, you know. If we can take a decision within one week, it takes us several weeks, yes. you know. You go to the Urban Development Ministry or you go to the Home Ministry and so on and so forth. And uh, the population is large. It's the most densely populated city. 18, 18 million. million. Now it's 18 million. So, and five, uh, uh, half mil I mean, half million people keep coming, coming in. Coming every year. Every mm -hmm. year. Then daily there's a crisscrossing of people, mm -hmm. about a million people. May I just uh, draw your kind attention? Uh, to certain problems related to yes. nurses in general, Malayali nurses in particular, mm. for the last two, three years, of course, Madam has initiated very, very uh, extensive vigil to check that, uh, uh, I mean, menace out, but still that certain legislation uh, you were promising uh, to, uh, I mean, avoid any uh, repeated incidents of uh, exploitation of nurses. Anything in that direction? No, I must tell you this very frankly. That one incident does not mean there are many of them happening. Yes, yes. You see, unfortunately, when attention is drawn repeatedly to something, yes. I wish it was drawn repeatedly <laughs> to some of the good things. Good things, yes. But there is no conflict. Mm. Maharashtrians living here, Keralites living here, Tamilians living here, and Gujaratis living here, Biharis, UP, and they all have their little clubs, their little. Um, groups, they have their uh, areas, their housing areas. It's not segregated, but you know the temples are there or halls are there which are specific. The Maharashtrians have theirs, the Tamilians have theirs. So I don't see any conflict at all. And I can tell you because I live here 24 hours, so I know. And there's no uh, feeling of... Uh, any bias towards anybody in particular. That part is quite clear, madam. And uh, yesterday I was having uh, uh, mm. a brief talk with uh, uh, Sri TK and I, uh, mm. and he was expressing. Uh, I just mentioned that probably we may get a chance for an interview with uh, uh, madam Shilaji. Then he told me, Mohan. <laughs>